is going on, Rock Fam? Woo! We're really excited that we're going to hopefully have our Christmas party next week on December 16th. So we are still hopeful for that. We're still planning on doing that. I haven't really heard of any cases in the youth or, or anything like that that have gone up. So we are still planning on doing that. I'm really excited because I get to see all your faces before Christmas and tell you all Merry Christmas. So I'm really excited about that. But to dive into the service today, um, we are going to hear from two people, one my wife and one Dana Warnock, their testimonies, um, kind of what God has been doing through their life and um, how they've dealt with certain situations. So I'm really excited to hear from them what God has done in their life and to hear their testimony. And before we do, the kind of like fun segment I kind of want to do, because if you notice in our last two videos, we did like the everything aggressive segment, and then we did like the five things you could do around the house if you're stuck at home, um, which was technically six, because we said that you could help your parents. I don't know if anybody actually did help. Did anybody actually help their parents? Hmm. <laughs> so, Anyways, the other like little fun thing that I kind of want to do is in the comments, go ahead and type out like any new hobby that you kind of like started up or did during the quarantine of 2020, like 2020, not just like just during this these past like four weeks, but like 2020, what new hobby have you kind of like picked up or did with all the extra time stuff that you had on your hands? So for me, what I did was I actually started learning card tricks, which is interesting. So, I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you a couple of my card tricks that I've learned. Some sleight of hand. It's not called magic. It's <laughs> some sleight of hand stuff. That's kind of fun things that I've learned. And if you ask me politely on Wednesday or whenever we, or on one, next Wednesday or whenever, whenever we're together, if you ask me politely, I might do a card trick on you if you ask me politely. But here are a couple card tricks that I kind of learned as a hobby, as something that I just decided to pick up during quarantine of 2020. So here you go. All right, now this is another weird angle for camera. What's up? <laughs> Diana, say hi. She's over there. All right, so for this trick, Diana's gonna be obviously involved. Now, if you, you can ask me how to do, do, to do this trick on you on like out of Wednesday night or whenever you see me in person. And like, this is for real. Like, I don't joke or like, I'm not gonna cheat. That's not how it works. Yeah. All right, because I can't just like what's the point of cheating and to say that I did it And then when you ask me to do the trick, I can't do the trick like, Right, so with that I'm gonna say Diana tell me when to stop like going like this ready Okay, stop. okay. That is your card Okay, I'm gonna turn away So that you guys so you can show it to them and whatnot There is the card All okay. right, turn around. So that is the card go ahead and put it Right there. Okay. Now it is in there. Now to make sure I didn't do any sleight of hand, I want to show the card. Not show the card. I'm going to show the deck, the whole entire deck. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? I want to show the entire deck to the audience at home, sitting at home. Now go ahead and just don't comment. If you know what the card is and you see the card, don't comment like, oh, it's the whatever of whatever. Just say like, oh, it's in there. I see it. It's in there. All right. Just be like, oh, it's in there, I see it, I see it, I, I see it. it, I see it. Oh, it's in there, it's in there, I see I it, I see, see it. it. Okay, so honey, do you see the card? I do see the card. Okay, now, now that the card is seen, what I'm going to do is shuffle the entire deck. Is I'm gonna do one of these. Oh my goodness. Do one of these shuffles, make sure it's all shuffled up and whatnot and all that fanciness. Like that. All right. A couple more shuffles. Should I do like the normal shuffle? Of good the shuffle that everyone that gets was really unintentional. <laughs> that was really unintentional. <laughs> I can vouch for you. Yeah, you you know how the trick works, in a sense. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to be able to have the ability to pick five cards. Okay, I get five chances to pick the right card out of 52 cards. So I'm gonna search through and I'm gonna pick out five cards that I think is the card that Diana chose. So I'm just gonna kinda of go through all of it really quickly. I'm gonna try and guess which one was hers. So I'm gonna pick that one. I'm gonna pick 
feel like it's higher than a four. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. I'm gonna pick this one. Mm, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick this one. And then I'm gonna pick, I feel like it's more up towards this end. Uh, right. <laughs> pick this card right here. Okay, so I picked four, five cards, not four cards. I picked five cards. So I picked all these cards, right? So I picked this card, this card, this card, this card, then this card. All these cards right here. Now it's one of, the, huh, don't tell me, but is it one of these five? Yes, it's one so of So it's five. one of these five. Okay, so now that I picked one of these five, so I picked this card, I picked four clubs, I picked the ace of dots, not the diamonds of spades, the king, wow, oh. not the king, <laughs> the jack of diamonds, I've, I've done this trick before, the ace of hearts, and the eight of spades. So with that, I'm gonna ha I have these five chords right here. So my first guess was the eight of spades but I'm not 100% sure on that one. So my second guess was the Ace of Hearts. I'm not 100% sure on that one either. But my third guess is the Jack of, Jack of Diamonds. I almost said the King of Diamonds, but it's the Jack of Diamonds. My fourth guess is the Ace of Spades. And my fifth guess is the Four of Clubs. So with that, I'm gonna put all of that right there. And I have five cards. So one, two, three, four, five. Five cards right here. So, hun, bring your hands, put them right here. <laughs> Go ahead and flip it over so you, they know it's in there. But it's in there. There's the cards right there. So, there are five cards right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the card that is in your hand, that is your card, here into this deck with the magical wave of. Not magical. It's not magic. The. <laughs> Whatever. The, with the pizzazz. Pizzazz. Huzzah. We're married. Huzzah. It's in there. <laughs> now, go ahead and open up your hand. How many cards are in there? I got one, two, three, four, not five. Is your card in there? Nope. No, it's not. So let's so take a so, peek, see. So where is it? Let's take a peek, see. Wow, that was really bad. And this, if you see in here, there is a card that is not flipped over like all the rest of them. And it is the Ace of Hearts. Which was indeed our card. Which was indeed. So that's a fun trick Bam. that I also know, which is really exciting. If you want to know what it is, don't ask because I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> all right. So that was a little bit of what I've learned in my sleight of hand -ness of <laughs> of stuff. Um, but anyways, like I said, comment below what new hobby that you may have picked up. And if you want to pick up a new hobby, I would totally do it because now is always a great time to pick up a new hobby of stuff that you want to do. So anyways, going into our service part of our, or the sermon part of our service, um, I want to explain a little bit of what testimony is and what is a testimony and kind of like how in the world that all like groups together before Diana and Dana share their testimony. I kind of want to explain it a little bit. And in a testimony, it's kind of like what God has done in your life. It's like, so for instance, like your life is a testament to what God has done for, and even into another example, you can take it into like what the literal meaning of the word testimony is. And it basically means to like, if you're in a court, house and you're in a courthouse and somebody did something wrong and you have seen that somebody has done something wrong you are the you are telling your testimony of what that person did and you're telling them that you that this is the you know this is the hundred percent the truth your honor this is i saw them do this and you're you're a testament to that person on what they did wrong or right or vice versa and so that's kind of like what testimony means in like the english and whatnot and if you go on google.com, that's kind of like what it means. So that's because that's what I did. <laughs> but other than that, like going back to the word testimony and how it applies to our lives is when God has done something in your life, that's a testament of God's power, a testament of God's love, a testament of God's joy, his, his peace, his patience. And in our lives, God is moving through us and doing different things each and every single day. So in a sense, every day is a testament because we're alive 
Every day is a testament because of how much he loves us. And each and every single one of us have the same testimony, testimony of salvation. We were lost. We were in sin. We were dirty. We had that dirty shirt on. We were in that sin. And because of Jesus dying on the cross and our belief in him, we are now set free from that sin. We are set free from that dirt and that muck. But now we are made clean and made righteous before the Lord. And we all have that testimony that in our lives, we can testify that we are righteous before God and we can testify to, to people around us that we are a child of God and all of us can do that. And that's a testimony about your life. Now, different people have different testimonies of what or how they got, got to God or what God did during their life. For instance, you've heard people of what, how God has healed them. Maybe you've heard a testimony of how God has healed them from cancer or or you hear a testimony, like in the Bible, how Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. Like that's like a testimony, right? And so many people have different testimonies of what God has done in their life, but they're seeing them because they're so confident that not just God did it in their life, but God can do it in your life as well, or the person they're talking to. That's why testimonies are so powerful because you are proclaiming what God has done and he can still do it again. And that reminds me of the song um, from uh, um, Elevation. I'm talking to my wife who's behind the camera from Elevation. <laughs> Elevation Worship, Do It Again or Testimony. They have my both. Testimony. They have my testimony. And but they also have this song called Do It Again. Mm -hmm. And it's they're both very powerful songs, but they're kind of talking about testimony because God can will do, do so many things through your life and you can tell your testimony to someone else. Two, one, give them confidence in God to bring them hope and faith in the Lord even stronger and stronger because God did it in my life and he can definitely do it in yours. And that's the honestly really strength and power of a testimony because God is moving and he's always moving. And it's really encouraging to hear from other people and other individuals what God has done in their life. And sometimes testimonies are from, from a long period of time. Like it takes a long period of time sometimes for testimonies to form in your in our lives. And and other times it's it's as simple as you know a healing or as quick as a healing. So kind of put that in your mind as we listen to two testimonies, one from my wife Diana and one from Dana. Two powerful, powerful testimonies that um, we get to listen to and hear their heart and what God has done in their lives. So stay tuned, and I'm excited to hear what they have to say. It's really weird because you're usually, I'm usually the one behind the camera, and you're usually the one <laughs> sitting here. <laughs> anyway, um, so hi guys. If you don't know me, I'm Diana. I'm Pastor Christian's wife. And uh, for part of our service tonight, we just really wanted to do some testimonies. And... Um, I have like two parts to my testimony and I was originally going to tell the main one because it's about how the Lord, you know, set me free from depression and restored my joy and all that. But I he really felt like he was pressing on my heart to share the second part of my testimony, which is about how um, basically gave up my dreams and desires and traded them in for his. Um, and I really feel like the reason why he was pushing that on my heart was because in this time, when days are uncertain, when times are uncertain, it's more important now than ever to let him be the author of our story and of our purpose and of our walk. So I just really felt like I was supposed to share this part of my testimony. I have some notes here that I'll probably refer to. Um, but basically, you guys know I like to sing. Um, ooh, shocker. <laughs> um, but what you don't know, what some of you might not know, is that for a long time, I really wanted to be like a big star, um, whatever that means. And uh, so around my probably 10th grade or 11th grade year of high school, uh, there was a point in time where at one point there were going to be auditions for American Idol in uh, Pittsburgh. And so, I was like, this is my moment. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna become a big star and people are gonna love me and I'm gonna go to Madison Square Garden and do all that crazy stuff. 
um, because at the end of the day, um, I had some more selfish motives and I wanted to use the talents that God had given me for selfish things like the love of people and um, just kind of selling myself out to the world in a sense. Like I just really wanted to um, be a part of the music scene of the world and uh, just do all of that. And so I was really excited. I, I was gonna audition for American Idol. And as soon as I uh, started to get into the process of thinking about it and asking people like what I should sing and stuff like that, I started to feel this tug on my heart and it didn't feel so good. And uh, I remember my mom was talking to me and she's like, is this really what you want to do? Like she was being a good supportive mom where she was like not telling me what to do, but she was kind of like, is this really what you want to do? Because before this, so many people had spoken over my life about worship. And I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. Um, and I just really wanted this. And so uh, <laughs> basically, it got down to like a week or two before the audition was supposed to happen. And I remember very distinctly, I was sitting in my bedroom and I felt the Holy Spirit tell me, you're not gonna sing for them, you're gonna sing for me. And I was like, what do you mean? Um, but I knew exactly what he meant in that moment. He meant, Diana, you're not gonna sing for the world, you're gonna sing for me. And weirdly even though it went against everything that I wanted in that moment I was like okay and I walked downstairs and I told my mom I'm not gonna do the audition and I uh, told my voice teacher at the time I'm not gonna do the audition and I just felt a lot of peace in that and so uh, that was kind of a turning point for me um, it really started to set things in motion and um, after I felt the Holy Spirit tell me that I was just like okay, what now? And so because I was already a part of the worship team at the church, God took me through a huge process of um, realigning my heart with uh, what actually he intended for my uh, voice to do and what he intended for the purpose of what my voice was gonna do, that it wasn't about the people, but that it was about spreading his word. And so he took my heart through a, a process and it was a very humbling process of you know, taking me down a few pegs mentally to be like, Diana, the only reason why you are quote unquote all that is because of the voice that I have given you. And it was a really cool process because it taught me a lot about his voice inside of me. And so because of that, um, I just wanna remind you guys today that it can be really scary to surrender your dreams to the Lord because they're like, God, they're my dreams. Like it's what I wanna do. But let me tell you, God can do so much more with your dreams than you could ever do on your in your own power. His dreams for you are, are bigger than any dream you could ever have for yourself. Um, and he just goes above and beyond what you could ever imagine that your life was going to look like. So just trust him in that. Um, and I'm happy to say now that because I trusted him with my dreams, um, I can happily say that uh, I, I no longer have that desire to please the world, to be loved by the world because I know that I'm loved by him and that is more than enough. And so now um, my desire is to use the voice that he's given me to be a light and to spread the message of his love and his salvation because now it's not about me pleasing the people, but it is about me pleasing the heart of God. And it is about being able to use that gift to be able to be a light to the nation. And let me tell you, I swear ever since that that moment of transformation, um, God is just, he's the best voice teacher and he can go above and beyond what you could ever imagine yourself doing. And my voice has been able to do things I never thought possible um, with the help of vocal training, but also just with the Holy Spirit. So I just really want to encourage you guys today to look at your life, to look at what you want to do, to look at your dreams and to lay them at the feet of God. Because trust me guys, we are working towards eternity and it's with him. It's not gonna be with this world, it's gonna be with him. So make your choice now to surrender those dreams to him and I just challenge you to see what he does with them. So I'm gonna pray with you guys and uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that I get to sit down and share this testimony today, God, that you have transformed my dreams into your dreams, God, and that um, you are able to do so much more with them that I could ever ask or imagine. God, I thank you that you have taken me through a process of transforming my heart to sing for you and only you, Lord. And I just pray, God, that as these students lift up their dreams to you, God, that you would show them that you are in control and that you do have their best interest in mind and that we would just remember in this time what is important. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, it's Dana Warnock, and here I am in the Mansberger studio. If you don't know, this is Ethan Mansberger's little little office. He's got his, his Emmys back here, and I just want to announce, if you haven't heard yet, I'm going to be the future Mrs. Mansberger. Oh, yeah. It's my little engagement thing. It's beautiful. He got it for me. Um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about actually a lot, a little overview about what the Lord has done in my life and um, just how he's been faithful. And I hope that this encourages you. So when I was younger, I was homeschooled and I have two parents who loved me very much, who were extremely involved, involved in church. And so I was raised a little homeschooler Christian kid. So if you're out there and maybe you're Christian schooled kid or something like that, maybe you can relate. You're kind of like slapped on with a label like, oh, you're that homeschool or Christian kid. Um, and all my life I felt like I kind of had that label. So I was even afraid to tell people that I was homeschooled sometimes just because they would start to judge you and be like, oh, okay, you're, you're a homeschooler. Um, so I was raised that way when I was little. And then when I was in, what was it, 11th grade, I started going to Lincoln Park Performing Arts High School. And when I went there, I experienced that kind of real world environment. And you know how kids can be in school. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced kids who are really bad. There's a lot of stuff coming at you and you gotta like figure out who you are. So I was thrown into that and um, because of my strong background and like knowing the word of God and having a solid family, it actually didn't affect me a lot. Um, because I knew like I am a Christian I'm gonna stand firm on the Word of God nobody's gonna speak against you know what God has spoken over my life and I know that I'm a child of his um, so it wasn't too 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 bad um, although I just felt like I was labeled a lot and like I didn't fit in a lot and uh, I just always had that sense of like people don't understand and sometimes this they don't understand me and they don't understand God and um, I was teased sometimes about like, you know, oh, you haven't done this, this, or this, or, um, you know, why don't you swear? Like, we'll pay you to swear. Like, who does that? Why don't you? It's um, just like stupid stuff like that. So, um, but I never regret like living for God and trying to do my best. And not that I was perfect, but I, it was a struggle. And I tried to live for God through my high school years. So God was there keeping me safe through those high school years. And then when I was ready to go to college, I didn't even know if I was smart enough to go to college. I was like, Jesus, you need to help me because I don't even know if I want to go. And I prayed and God very clearly, he actually gave me three scholarships to this one college, like one college. And I was like, that is my confirmation. I need to go to PTI. And, um, I didn't feel like I was smart enough because I'm not like a math sign, you know, I'm not a mathy person or an English person. I'm more artistic. So I was at Lincoln Park for drawing, painting and photography. So that's what I did. And that's what I submitted for um, my scholarships. And that's what got me into college. So whatever you have right there, that's a testimony, like whatever skills you have, maybe you are good at math. Maybe you are only good at art. Like whatever you have, God has made you a certain way and he's gifted you with things that he's going to use for good, like maybe even scholarship someday. So don't dismiss that. Um, but when I went to college, it was kind of the same thing. I was like that goody two shoes girl. And, um, you know, people like judge you and label you and, and always question like, why don't you want to do this or that? I had people trying to get me to smoke and drink and gain experience in other areas that I was like, no, thank you. And, and it, it sometimes just made me feel like they made me feel like I, 
um, was naive or something like, like, oh yeah, you just haven't experienced what we've experienced. Like we're so superior because we've done this, this and that, and you just need to get all this experience. And sometimes that, that got to me and I was like, is this like really true? And I just wasn't sure, but I knew I was like, no, I, I know that I need to live for God. Like I know that I shouldn't do those things. And when people would question me, it, it was like, I had to, instead of just saying my parents told me that I wasn't allowed, I had to start standing up for myself and I had to choose to say, no, I don't want to drink like, because I want to try to live for God. And, and I want to, you know, I want to be, uh, live a holy life and I don't want to, you know, party and be wild. And I don't want to do stupid things because I want to try to live righteously the way that God has intended for me to live. And that was hard. That was hard in school. And um, one of the things that made it hard too is like, I never had a boyfriend through high school. I never had a boyfriend through college. And as some of you might know, I met Ethan in college, but at that time I, I never thought of him that way. He was just a friend and he was in a different major. Like he was just a goofy guy and he was very different than he is now. So I just didn't, I just didn't like him. And being alone, like not only not having somebody as like a boyfriend, but being like the only kind of homeschooler person, like sometimes it felt really lonely, but that was when I always relied back on God. And I was like, God, you said, you know, this is what you say in your word. We live for you. You know, you're going to be with us. You're going to, you're going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? He's going to always stick by my side. So I just stuck, um, stuck close to those scriptures and just relied on God through all of that, even though I wasn't perfect and it was hard. And uh, there were times when, you know, I would cry because I'm like, I'm alone or I, I just, I just didn't feel, sometimes I didn't always feel like God was with me, but I always knew it. And sometimes you just have to rely back on those scriptures and just go back to the word to remember he's always with you and he's never going to leave you. And when you do things for him and when you give up things for him, he's always going to bless you. So, um, fast forward, I get a job in the real world. Um, God opens an opportunity immediately for that. People at work thought I was weird and they're like, why are you so happy all the time? Like, are you on drugs? And when I told um, my one coworker, I was like, actually it's Jesus. I always just felt like God was just filling me with such purpose because I'm going to this dark place that needs Jesus. And I'm like, wow, whenever I come in here, I'm like shining and I'm just like, I am showing them Jesus. Cause like when, when darkness, like when a candle goes into a dark room, like it lights up the whole room. And I was like always going into work with that mindset. Like I can be a light. And they thought like, I was like on drugs or something. And I'm like, no, it's Jesus. And the one guy's like, no, I don't know. I mean, I don't believe that because it's something better than that. And I was like, you don't understand. Like God actually sustains you. And, and what I realized after college and after, you know, becoming an adult and being in the real world is even though I thought or was tempted to think that I missed out on certain things because I didn't do certain things. Um, when I look back, I don't regret every party I turned down. I don't regret every, every stupid thing that I turned down because I am now, I have a whole heart. I've only ever dated one person. I've only ever been like, I've only been with Ethan and and God brought me to him in a, in a perfect way when I was serving in the church and it just happened to line up. And that that's like my life testimony is God was always consistently there. And every time that I turned something down when it was hard, when I turned down guys that I knew were wrong, it was hard, but God was faithful and he knew the perfect timing. And it doesn't just go for, you know, dating somebody, but it's other things in high school, like you might turn down, you know, going to a party or something, but then you realize later, I have friends that partied and did whatever they wanted. And now they are some of the most miserable, lonely people. And it's sad. And that was what really made me realize, wow, like God was with me the whole time. I mean, I knew he was, but it's just as an adult looking back i am so glad that i chose to live with god then and it makes me all the more confident to choose to live with god now and i'm telling you the testimony because you guys are in those spots 
where it is so hard and I think it's harder for your generation even than mine or the previous generations or your parents you guys are bombarded with so many things that a lot of us you know maybe weren't at that time but God will be faithful to you if you choose to turn away sin and turn to his righteousness and turn to his word and turn to serving him he will never leave you he will never forsake you and he will give you blessings and trust me I have way more joy and happiness and the desires of my heart than the people that I lived in high school and in college with who did whatever they wanted and claimed that they were superior and more experienced and all of that and my heart hurts for them because they just they could have it too if they would just choose to live for God and that is my life testimony and that's what I want you to take away is you're never gonna regret living for God um, so I hope that touches you and I hope that you take those steps in your life to live for God and not for yourself I love you guys she did so good I'm proud of her <laughs>